What's happening everyone? Today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the 2021 Ford Escape Titanium. Now the Escape does have a few different engine choices that are available, available in either front wheel or all wheel drive depending on whether you're in the US or the Canadian market. Steve here, Cars with Steve, and before we get started I want to give Marigold Ford a huge shout out and a thank you for giving me access to this vehicle to shoot the video for you today. Check down in the description below in order to find their contact details. Now on top of that I also want to do a little bit of a giveaway because I know a lot of businesses have been struggling during this pandemic. So so what I'm going to be doing, I actually hit a gift card code somewhere inside of this video. If you find it, you're the first one to message me. I'm going to give you a $20 gift card to whatever place you'd like to, whether that's a restaurant, grocery store, whatever the case may be, whoever you'd like to support during this pandemic. But let's dive into it, have a little bit of fun and see what the 2021 Ford Escape is all about. taking a peek at the exterior styling of the vehicle. So first things first, this is the titanium version of the vehicle with the titanium elite package. So it literally pretty much is the most that you can get out of the Escape. So when it comes down to it though, the styling of it for the most part is gonna be the same across the entire lineup. From a basics perspective, we're gonna have the same headlamps. We've got our fog lamps there as well. Now, when it comes down to the actual tires, inside of the Escape Titanium, we're looking at a 19 inch tire. When we look at some of the other trim levels, it's typically gonna be a 17 inch that we'll find instead. Now, that's one thing to know because even when it comes down to winter tires, we do need a 17 inch minimum tire as well to use as winters on this thing, whether we're looking at the Escape S or the Titanium trim. But nice look when it comes down to it. You also do have a few different rim choices that are available depending on which trim level of the vehicle you look at and which package you go for. Now the vehicle itself went through a pretty big upgrade for the 2020 model year, complete redesign. I think the thing looks really, really nice. If you're looking for more of that boxier style, look at the Bronco Sport because that takes the older Escape, that like early 2000s where it's very big and boxy. So that's definitely a good option if you're looking for more of a boxier type of a vehicle. But we've got that Escape badging along the top there. We've got the titanium, so the trim level badging along the side, all wheel drive. And that's how you're gonna know if it's all wheel versus front wheel because only all wheel is gonna show there when you're in the Escape S, the base you're going to have no badging along the back there as well. Now this specific one does have the tow package directly from the factory. So just aesthetically it's cut out and it looks really nice. When it comes down to the towing capacity, that's going to depend on which trim level of the vehicle you go for. Because if you go for the hybrids, whether that's the regular hybrid or the plug-in, those are going to be able to tow up to 1500 pound maximum. The 1.5 liter EcoBoost is going to be able to pull up to 2000 pounds, while the two liter turbo that's inside of this vehicle is going to be able to pull up to 3500 pounds. Now looking at a few things that are standard, backup camera is going to be a North American standard for every vehicle. We do have the reverse sensing system. That's going to be standard on the Titanium and the SEL trim level of the vehicle. We also do have, the, as part of the Ford Copilot 360 package, our blind spot system. Let's just know if anybody's into the blind spot. And we've also got a lane keeping system. So lane keeping, lane centering. Now one other thing that makes the Titanium Escape unique is that we also do have that forward sensing system. So let's just know what's going on in front of us. Now one thing to note, it's a forward sensing system, but it's not a 360 camera. So it's really useful for parking. It can actually help us out with parking assist as well, but it's not gonna give us a full 360 view. Taking a peek underneath the hood of the vehicle. So this is the two liter turbocharged engine that you're gonna find inside of the Escape lineup. There are actually technically four different engine choices that are available. There's the 2.5 liter hybrid, which is gonna push up 200 horsepower and 155 pound feet of torque. There's the 2.5 liter plug-in hybrid, which is gonna push out 221 horsepower and 155 pound feet of torque. There's the 1.5 liter EcoBoost, which we will not get inside of the Titanium. It's strictly this two liter turbo, but the 1.5 is gonna push out 181 horsepower and 190 pound-feet of torque. While the two liter EcoBoost engine that we're staring at here, this is gonna push out 250 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. So plenty of power and lots of options when it comes down to it. Now, when we take a peek under the hood, we've got the option of easily topping up some fluids if we need to. We can easily check our oil, and we've also got easy access to the battery. Now taking a peek at the key fob of the vehicle. So first thing to point out, all of the key fobs are going to have this emergency access key with the exception of the S version of the vehicle. So the base level, it's not gonna be push button start. So you're gonna have just a regular key instead. When we get into the SC and above, we're gonna get this key fob. Now when it comes down to it, we've got our unlock and our lock button, remote start, our trunk release, our horn or our panic alarm button. In order to build a remote start the vehicle, we're just gonna press the lock button once and the circle button twice. Vehicle's now remote started. In order to cancel the remote start, you just press that circle button once. 
In order to be able to get into the trunk of the vehicle, we've got a couple different options. So on the key fob, we can press this button twice in order to be able to get inside, but we've got a few other options. Now this is the Escape Titanium, which means that we've got a foot activated power lift gate. Inside of the SEL, it's gonna be power with the optional upgrade to the foot activated as well. So you just swipe your foot underneath, but just underneath in the handle there, there also is a button. We can press that in order to lift the lift gate up as well. Let's have a peek inside. All right, so cargo dimensions for the vehicle are going to be showing up, and one of the nice things is that it's a 60-40 split, 60% driver, 40% passenger, so we've got the option of folding those seats down independently if we want to. Now, one of the nice things is that these seats can also be moved forward. So just on the inside, all we can do is slide the seat forward a little bit, and that's going to create a little bit of extra depth, which is nice because with that seat forward, you may not necessarily have to actually fold the seats down. All right, now let's take a peek and see what the dimensions are looking like when we've got that second row folded down as well. So a lot more space, and then as I mentioned, we've got a 60-40 split, so we can fold down one side or the other if we need to create a little bit more space inside of the vehicle. Right now, as we start to move in the back here, so a few things to point out. So as you can see there, we do have our 12 volt power point, so we can plug some things in if we need to. Now underneath, so as you can see there, we do have our mini spare tire, as well as a little bit of extra storage space, and then we've got our spigot if we ever need to fill up using a jerry can. Now, one thing to note about the mini spare tire, in Canada, that's gonna be included across all of the trim levels of the vehicle. If you're in the States, unfortunately, it is an add-on option. You do need to order it at the time of getting it from the factory. You could look at something aftermarket as well if you really wanted that mini spare tire. Now, taking a look at second row spacing, I'm six feet tall. I've got the driver's seat set up for somebody six feet tall, and I still have a nice amount of knee space and a good amount of foot space. Now, up overhead, this thing does have that twin panel sunroof, and even with that roof, I've got maybe about an inch and a half worth of head space up overhead. So if you've got people that are a little bit taller, you could definitely get them sitting in that other seat instead. Now, one of the nice things about the seats inside of the Escape, the entire Escape trim level lineup, is that we can move the seat forwards and backwards if we'd like to. So there's a little lever in between our legs, and it's going to be the same for the driver and the passenger side. And one of the nice things is that there is another lever along the side as well, the side of the seat. We can crank that in order to move the seat backwards a little bit. So we can recline it a little bit. When I recline back, I'm closer to about two inches of head space. So we do have a little bit more space when we fully recline those seats. Taking a peek along the inside, we do have a pocket along the passenger side, nothing along the driver, and that's going to be the same for all trim levels of the vehicle. We can figure out what's going on with our fan, and we've also got a few USB ports in the back there, so our USB and our USB-C. Now, one thing to note is that we do not have that 150 watts of that regular wall outlet in the back of the Escape anymore. Now, as we start to look back in the seat, so we do have a nice look to the actual seat itself, and we do have a few cup holders in the back there, so we can pull that down, click it in order to lock it back into place. Now, as we take a look along the actual seat itself, the, I should say the door itself, basics, so we've got our handle, we've got our window control, and a little bit of storage space along the actual door. As we move up, we've got a handle, and then we've also got an interior light. All right, taking a peek along the driver's side door, so we can easily lock and unlock the vehicle there. Along the side, we also do have a series of numbers we can just kind of make out, but that's gonna give us the ability to get inside of the vehicle without the actual fob on us. Now, as we actually move inside, so this is the titanium trim level of the vehicle. So we do have a few seat memory buttons. We've got our lock and our unlock button. We've got some basics for our side view mirror controls, and we can also adjust our windows. As we start to move down a little bit, because we're in the titanium trim, we do have a bang and a Lufsen sound system. And then we've got a little bit of storage along that driver's side door as well. As we start to move inside, so just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel, we can move our, we can open our lift gate, so open and close. We've got our fog lamps. We can figure out what's going on with our running lamps. Adjusting the driver's seat inside of the vehicle might be power, might be manual, depending on which trim level of the vehicle you're looking at. We're looking at the titanium trim, which means we've got a power adjustable driver's seat, power adjustable passenger seat as well. So in order to be able to adjust, it's just there's a series of toggles along the left-hand side. We can move the seat forwards, backwards, up and down. There's another one in behind, and that's going to be for the backrest, so we can go backwards or forwards with that. And then there's another circular one, and that's going to be for lumbar support, so we can give ourselves a little bit more stability in our lower back. Adjusting the steering wheel inside of the entire trim level lineup is going to be a manual process. So just by our left knee, we've got a little lever there. We're just gonna crank that down and it's telescopic so we can go in and out, up and down. Once you've got that perfect position, you're just gonna click in order to lock it back into place. 
Next up, let's take a peek at the steering wheel of the vehicle. So this is going to be an in-depth look at the actual wheel itself, starting off on the left-hand side. Now, this is the titanium version of the vehicle, which means that we do have adaptive cruise control. We can set how far or close we are away from the vehicle that's in front of us. Let's actually turn the system on for a second so we can tell it's on just when that wheel shows up in the middle there. And then we've got a distance indicator, so how close or how far are we away from the vehicle that's in front of us? Moving down, we can turn that lane centering system on or off, and then we can cancel out. Once we've got our set speed, we can increase or decrease one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time. Now this is adaptive cruise control, which is essentially set and forget it cruise. You set it, let's say at 100 kilometers an hour in the highway. If the car in front of you slows down, yours is automatically gonna brake as well. If they pick up speed or get out of the way, yours will pick right back up to your set speed again without you having to actually press resume or anything. It's a really neat system once you get the hang of it. Moving down, we can increase or decrease our volume. We can also mute out. Looking along the right side, few different buttons starting along the bottom. We can change between songs or radio stations. We can hang up or answer a phone call. We've got our voice command prompt where we can do things like changing the radio station, navigating, etc. using our voice. Moving up a little bit. Now this is going to be the basic up and down button in order to switch between active screens for our cluster. But first of all, like that 12.3 inch digital cluster, I think that looks absolutely incredible. It's going to be standard on the titanium trim level, it's a, and it's optional on the SEL trim level when you get the technology package. But as you can see there, really nice look to it. This is going to be our basic menu button, but we'll get to that one in just a second, because we've got this other button along the top there. Now this is going to be for our heads up display. We've got our heads up display, which we can toggle off if we want to, but if we kind of look, look up a little bit, you can just kind of make it out. It's a little little cutout along the top there where you can see your speed. If you've got adaptive cruise control set up, you'd also be able to see your set speed there as well. So it's a really, really neat system from that perspective. We can turn it on or off, we can adjust, and we can figure out what content do we want showing. Do we want our distance indicator, incoming phone calls, our lane keeping system? Do we want that showing up as well? I really wish that you could actually see this thing on the screen. It's really difficult to do it. It's hard to pick it up just because of the nature of cameras, the way that they work. But this thing is absolutely incredible. I love the fact that we've got that option option there where we can look at all sorts of different things moving back again and then like I said we can turn it off completely if we want to but let's actually dive deep into the menus and figure out what's going on there so this is going to be our up and down and then our basic menu button so we can select what screens are showing up so we've got our fuel economy trip one two etc our eco behavior our trailer light and a few other things seat belts and then our auto start stop Pressing back again brings us back to that home screen. And then as we move up and down, we've got a few different options there. So we can press and hold in order to reset our fuel economy. That's gone away. And moving back, let's go down. We've got our trip one counter, same thing, press in the middle. We've got our tire pressure and then our basic calming screen. Jumping back inside of the menu, we've got our audio, where we can change between AM, FM, Sirius XM, essentially whatever active sources we've got. If your cell phone was connected, that would show up there. If you had a uh, USB stick with MP3s on it, that would show up as an option as well. And then moving back, oh, one too many times. Pressing navigation, we can look at your home, previous destinations, point of interest, and a number of other things. If your phone is connected, that would show up. We've got some basics for settings, so setting up our oil life, and then our display setup. Do we want to show the miles per hour as well as kilometers? And then do we want to show that tachometer as well? Yes or no? And then we've also got the eco coach. So visible always in eco coach or eco advice as well. And that's going to be the basics of the actual instrument cluster screen. Now, as we start to move forward a little bit, so off to that left stick, there's a button just along the very tip. So all you're gonna do is just touch the tip and that's going to turn that lane keeping system on or off. So we know it's on when we actually see those bowling lanes. You can just kind of see them come on as I press the button again. So the actual system itself doesn't fully activate until we hit about 60 kilometers an hour. And we know it's active because that's gonna go green, letting us know that it's now active. And then once we start to veer over into a lane without signaling, we'll either get a little bit of a steering wheel shake or it'll gently pull us back into our lane in order to recenter us. So it's kind of an system from that perspective. We can toggle that system on or off if we'd like to. We can flash our high beams if we'd like. Now one thing to note, you cannot be in the auto setting if you want to flash or if you want to permanently lock out your high beams. You need to be on the permanent on in order to be able to keep them on permanently. We do have auto high beams inside of this vehicle, but it also does have rain sensing wipers so we can figure out how sensitive it is to wind, the rain that's hitting the windshield. Along the very end there we can also control what's going on with our rear wiper. So we can turn that one on or off. We're going to pull into wars for that front wiper fluid, push away for the rear. All right, next up, let's cover off this Sync 3 media screen. So this is going to be standard inside of the SE, the SEL, and the titanium trim level of the vehicle. Now, depending on the trim level of the vehicle you're looking at, you may or may not have factory navigation. The in the titanium, it's going to be standard. In the lower trim levels, it's available as an option. But if you don't have factory navigation, don't worry about it because we do have the option of using Android Auto and Apple CarPlay inside of the vehicle, which means that we can use things like Google Maps, Apple Maps, and Waze inside of the vehicle, which I think is an awesome ability. So very, very simple to set that one up. We'll cover that off in just a second. 
But if your vehicle has factory navigation, this is the way it's going to look. We've got the basics of our map. We can figure out what's going on with our audio. We can add a phone in. If our phone is connected, it would show up there as well. Moving into our audio tab, we can change between different sources, so AM, FM, Sirius XM, if your phone is connected, if you had a USB stick with MP3s on there, all of those different entertainment sources would show up. So we've got our entertainment source there. We can do a direct tune if we'd like to. We've got a tuning rocker right there that we can use that instead. We can just type in. Honestly, we can manually type that way. We can use the rocker, but your best bet is just to use the voice command prompt on the steering wheel. So by pressing that button, we've got the option of changing it out, changing the station out if we'd like to. But we've got our station there. If you want to save it in, all you're going to do is press and hold any of the available spots. Preset is now saved. It's really that simple. Now while we're at it, let's actually do a quick audio test. So let's crank this thing up a little bit. So good, so good. Now this is the upgraded Bang & Olufsen sound system that's going to be standard inside of the titanium trim level of the vehicle. So it's not going to sound like that if you get into the S, the S, so the base model of the vehicle. So it is going to be a titanium trim level exclusive. Now setting up a phone is a very straightforward process. Literally all we're gonna do is make sure that on our phone our Bluetooth is turned on and we're just gonna hit add phone on that screen. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Okay, now on our phone, we're just going to wait for Escape to show up. Okay, there you go. As you can see, Escape is now there, so we're just going to press that. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. All right, so we just want to make sure that those numbers match up, and in this case they do, so we're going to hit Pair and then Yes. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice-activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Perfect. And then on the actual phone itself, we're just going to allow contacts and favorites to sync. All right, now, as you can see there, we've got a few other options. So what we're gonna do is make sure we turn 911 Assist on. And the big reason why is because with 911 Assist on, if the vehicle senses a collision, it's actively going to dial 911 for us and talk with the operator. Automatic contact download, yeah, we're connecting our phone. We wanna make sure that our contacts will download to the vehicle. Perfect, so my cell phone is now connected. And as you can see there, we've got recent calls, contacts, we've got my phone and a number of other things. Now, if we ever need to remove a phone, we go into our settings ooh, and let's go to our phone there. So we press phone, we can view devices, look at a number of other things. When we click in, we can either disconnect or we can completely remove the device if we really want to. But jumping into our phone again there, so you can see phone is connected. We jump into our home screen, phone is connected there. Jump into our audio, look at our sources. We've got LiveX Live, which is a radio app, or we can jump into my iPhone instead. So we've got a few different options that are available there. All right, now setting up Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is a very straightforward process. First step is just to take a USB cable and we're just gonna plug it into the available USB port just right at the front of the vehicle there. We're just gonna take the opposite end and we're just gonna plug it into our phone. And we're gonna give that just a second. Hey, okay, Apple CarPlay lets you use your phone in a way. We're just gonna continue there. And we're just gonna agree on the screen. Perfect, and as you can see there, we're fully connected. Now on my phone, it's asking me, do I want to allow my favorites to, my oh, sorry, CarPlay to work while my phone is locked? Yes, we want to make sure we do that. And as you can see, uh, the phone is now fully connected to the vehicle. We've got my phone, we've got my maps, messages, and a number of other things. Now what's one of the cool things? We can use Apple Maps, we can use Google Maps or Waze directly through this middle screen. So we don't have to worry about the factory navigation because we've got the flexibility of using one of these map applications instead. Now one of the nice things about the Apple side of things is that we do have the option of syncing up and changing what's going on with CarPlay. So we go to customize. So actually, let me step back a couple. So what we're gonna do is on our phone, we're gonna go to general settings, we're gonna go to CarPlay, we're gonna click on the vehicle, customize, and we can now just drag and drop in order to be able to customize the tray. So if you have a tendency to maybe listen to your audiobooks and podcasts more, we've got that flexibility. We can also reset it back to our factory default again. If we've played around with it a little bit too much, it brings us right back up to our default setting. Hop back onto the inside there, and as you can see, we're now really we're now back to our factory defaults. But we've got a ton of different options and a lot of flexibility. Jumping back home, we can go back to our forward home screen instead. We can jump back into CarPlay if we go up or down. We can look at our CarPlay preferences where we can remove my phone or we can toggle CarPlay off. Now that's useful because we're back to factory navigation, but my phone is still plugged in and charging up. So you've got a lot of flexibility there when it comes down to it. Right now, setting up an Android device is literally the exact same process. So what we're gonna do, my, my iPhone's still connected, so we jump back home. We're just gonna jump into settings for a second and click on phone. We can view devices, and then as you can see there, we've got my currently connected iPhone. We can also add in a Bluetooth device. Your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. So we're just gonna toggle our Bluetooth on on our phone, and as you can see there, escape has shown up. So we're just gonna click on. 
confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay, and in this case, the pins do match up, so we're gonna hit okay on the phone and yes on the screen. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, so we are now connected there on my phone. It's asking me do I want to access to my messages? Yes, we've selected that. And because I've already set up the iPhone, if you don't have more than one phone connected, this is not going to show up. But if you do, you can select one as a favorite. Finish, and as you can see there, we are now fully connected. And it's also asked me do I want to allow access to my contacts? So yes. And as you can see, we're now fully connected. We jump into the phone and we're now connected to the Galaxy instead. So really, really neat because we can have multiple phones connected to the vehicle if we want to. So as you can see there, we're connected to a few different devices. And then we can hop in in order to set one as the favorite. But we do have the option of setting up Android Auto as well. And very similar to the Apple side of things, it's very straightforward. We're just gonna take our USB cable and plug that into any of the available USB ports. From there, we're gonna take the opposite end of the cable and we're just gonna plug our phone in and we're gonna get a second there. Three, two, and Android Auto would like to extend the platform. So we're gonna hit continue and we're gonna agree. Now on my phone, I'm just gonna hit next, and in just a second there, it's gonna connect. Three, two, one, and we are fully connected. Look at this. All right, so we're fully connected there. I've got Google Maps rocking it. And as you can see, we've got my phone, we've got my podcast, we've got my messages, and a number of other things. Now, if we ever need to, we can click on that forward button in order to bring us back to the home screen again, jump back into Android Auto, and then as you can see, along the bottom, we've got our notifications as well as our Google Assistant. Now, very similar to the Apple side of things, we do have the option of customizing this thing a little bit. So if you search for Android Auto on your phone, so you can see there, we've got our settings. So we're just gonna click on. And as you can see there, we've got a car that we're currently connected to. We can customize the launcher if we want to. So very similar to what we saw on the Apple side. All we're just gonna do is drag and drop. Now, one thing to note, we do need to restart Android Auto in order for those changes to come into effect, but we do have the option of customizing the launcher if we want to. We've got our Google detection, our Google assistant. We can turn the weather on or off and a number of other things. So we do have quite a little bit of flexibility. Now, if we ever do need to delete a phone from the vehicle, it's very straightforward to do that. We jump back to the home screen. Now, from there, we also still do have Android Auto set up, so we can click on that and we can disable it temporarily. And as you can see, Android Auto is now gone. And we jump inside of our phones. We can view devices. We've got the Galaxy that we've just connected. We can disconnect it, we can make it a favorite, or we can completely remove it. So a few seconds in, three, two, one, and we are now fully disconnected, and it's that easy setting up Android Auto and Apple CarPlay inside of these vehicles. All right, now that's gonna be the basics of adding a phone. Now looking at navigation, we do have factory navigation, which we can easily search for an address. We just hit search and we can click in. So we go through typing in an address and it is predictive. So you just stop typing for a second and give it a sec. And then as you can see, addresses start to pop up and we click and we can save it as a favorite if we want to. So it's gonna save it as a favorite for a second and watch what happens three, two, one, and we've got it now saved. Now, one of the nice things is that we can use the voice command prompt in order to navigate to our home or our work address, but if we actually click on a save favorite, we're gonna dive in, we can click on edit, and when we do that, we can change the name and a few other things. So we can set a name so that when we press that voice command button, we can say navigate to this person's house instead, and it would do that for us. So it's really, really great from that perspective. But moving back there, as you can see, we haven't set an address as of yet. So we hit search, we look at favorites, which we've already saved in this address, and we can navigate. Obey traffic laws, be alert, and use voice commands while driving. All right. Please so, proceed to the highlighted route. As, and the route guidance will start. We've got the route going. It's not too far out because it's the dealership address here. We can mute out the we can mute out the voice if we want to, and then just along the very top, we can X in order to be able to cancel the route as well. Now, one of the nice things is that when we've got a route going, it actually will show up inside of that heads up display, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Now, when we move inside of our menu, we've also got our screen view, traffic list, and we've got some navigation settings. So our map preferences, we've got a few different options there. We've got our breadcrumbs, our point of interest icons, and a few other things. Route preferences, do we want the fastest, shortest, or the most eco-friendly route? Do we want to use the HOV lanes? Do we want to avoid freeways, toll roads, tunnels, things like that? Navigation preferences, when our voice command prompts come up, do we want to have the voice and the prompt? Do we want to have just the voice or do we just want to have the prompt, the tone that we get with an upcoming turn? And that's going to be the basics of our navigation there. We've got our favorites, point of interest, and then our home and our work address as well. Looking at our apps, so certain apps will work directly through this middle screen. We might actually have to be connected through USB for certain ones to work through on the, on the Android side of things. So not every app will work over Bluetooth. You will have to be connected for some of them as well. And even on the, the Android Auto side of things, not every app will work inside of Android Auto. You might actually have to go through this route in order to be able to find apps that will work as well. 
jumping into our settings, we've got our sound, so we can change out the treble mid-range bass, balance, sport mode, a few other things. We've also got our clock. So with our clock, we can change between a few different things. So we can change with our, our hours, minutes, AM, PM. We've got our 24 hour mode. We can get the vehicle to automatically determine what the time should be based off of daylight savings time or GPS, et cetera. Moving back, we've got our Bluetooth, which we can toggle on or off. We can view connected devices, which if we back, jump back into connected devices for a second, we've got my phone, which we can easily disconnect or we can easily connect to again. So we press that and we can connect it or we can completely remove. In a few seconds, it should pop back up and we are now fully connected to that phone again. Moving back, we've got my phone, we've got radio, so as you can see there, we've got the HD radio, we've got our radio text, as well as the preset pages. Preset pages, always recommend just go to the max pages, so six pages there. And the big reason why, we jump back home and we've got six, well, I should say six pages, so 30 presets total. And that's a mix of AM, FM, Sirius XM, etc. Now, if we change that out to, let's actually go back to our audio for a second, and we go to Sirius XM for a second, watch what happens now. Our button is now Sirius XM, so we can set out different categories, we can tune things out, we can lock different channels out as well. So if you're a heavy Sirius XM user, knowing that you've got that capability and flexibility to change a number of things out by changing it out to that radio instead. Driver assistance, we've got a lot of advanced settings here. Starting off along the very top, we've got our cruise control, which is adaptive, adapt, either normal, adaptive, or the intelligent. The normal is exactly that, so it's just your regular cruise control. Adaptive is your set it and forget it cruise. So you set it at 100 on the highway, car in front of you slows down, yours is automatically going to break. If they pick up speed or get out of the way, yours will automatically pick you back up to your set speed again. Intelligent takes the adaptive to the next level, and it's all based off of this tolerance level. Because let's say you set it at a tolerance of zero. So if you've got your speed set for, I don't know, I don't know 60 kilometers an hour, and it drops down from 60 to 50, and it recognizes it through speed sign recognition, it's automatically gonna slow the vehicle down. So it's very, very smart from that perspective. Our lane keeping system works three different ways. We've got either the lane centering mode, so we've got the alert, which is actually going to give us a little bit of a steering wheel shake if we start to veer over without signaling. We've got the aid, which is actually going to recenter us and kind of bump us back into our lane. And the alert and the aid will do both. So we'll get a little bit of a steering wheel shake and it'll bump us back into our lane as well. Moving back, the, inten the intensity of the, of the aid itself, or the shake I should say, is it a high normal or a low shake? Moving back, we've got our pre-collision assist, so a few different things there. We've got our active braking, so if the vehicle, if it recognizes a potential collision, it's automatically gonna brake for us. Speed sign recognition, we've got a few different options there. So we've got a speed warning, so if we're going a little bit too fast, we're gonna a little bit of a chime. Our view view camera, delayed, yes or no. Our blind spot system, if we turn that one on or off, it's actually going to highlight orange, so we can just kind of make it out there. So it lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. So it's really, really useful. So I do recommend keeping that one turned on. And a big reason why is because it's a non-obtrusive light. Like it's not like it's gonna beep at us or anything like that. Cross traffic alert. If you're backing up and the vehicle senses somebody coming perpendicular, it's gonna let you know of a potential collision. Driver alert. Are you getting too many warnings? You should probably take a break. Moving into our vehicle settings now, we've got a few different things. So we've got our 30 minute idle. Rear occupant alert is kind of a neat one. So watch what happens when I turn the vehicle off. Okay, so this is the rear occupant alert. More or less just lets you know to check the back seat to make sure you didn't forget anybody back there. So I think it is a very useful feature, but you've got the option of turning it off if you wanted to. Moving down, we've got our easy entry exit, which what's going to happen is it's going to, it's going to work for our seat adjustment. So if we go to exit the vehicle, it's actually going to lower the seat out, lower the seat down, I should say, in order to make sure that we can easily get in and out of the vehicle. Now, a few other things to point out, we've got our my key. So the my key setting is going to give us the option of setting up certain limitations for our individual key fob, which is kind of a neat setting. So let's say if you're lending the vehicle out to somebody, you can set it up so that they can't go faster than hundred kilometers an hour. So it's kind of a neat setting there. Remote start setup, we've got a few different options there. So on the actual fob, we've got the option of remote starting, or we can remote start through our cell phone using the Ford Pass app, and that's on the Android and the iPhone side of things. But when we go to remote start, what happens? Climate, is it gonna be based on auto, let the vehicle determine the temperature, or is it gonna be based off of your last settings? Our seats and duration there, or sorry, seats and steering wheel, I should say, our heated seats and the heated steering wheel, will those come on, yes or no? And the duration of the start, five, 10, or 15 minutes. Moving back, we've also got ambient light. So we've got a few different options when it comes down to the brightness. Unfortunately, we don't have the flexibility of changing out the actual color, but we can adjust how bright the ambient light is. 
Moving down, we've got our wipers, so the courtesy wipe. If we've got our windshield wipers going and we stop, and the windshield wipers stop, it's actually going to go one more time to get rid of any excess liquid. Our rain sensing wipers, so those come on, yes or no. And then the rain sensing wipers, make sure you turn those ones off if you're going into a car wash. So definitely useful there. And then our rear wiper on. So when we're actually in reverse, if we've got our front wipers going, it's automatically going to turn the back wiper on for us as well. So very useful setting there. We've got our power lift gates. We can enable or disable the switch on the outside. Easy entry exit, Ooh, which we've already been through. One second, we're out of backup. All right, here we go. This is what I'm looking for. We've got our wipers, which we've already done. Uh, power lift gate, lighting. That's what I'm looking for. All right, so we've got our auto high beams. So the vehicle is equipped with auto high beams, which means that if it senses a if it senses an oncoming vehicle, it's going to dim your high beams for you. And this is a neat one because if it's too dark out, it's automatically going to turn them on. If it senses an oncoming vehicle, it's going to dim them before turning them off and then turning them back on again. And then our auto lamp delay, when we go to lock, how long do those lights stay on for? locks for the vehicle auto unlock we've got a few other things there are uh, one of the neat ones is actually this mist lock chirp so if you go to lock the vehicle and you don't have all the doors shut properly you're going to get a chirp letting you know about that when we go to unlock the vehicle do all doors become unlocked or is it just the driver's side door your preference there and then we've also got our intelligent access as well Moving down a tiny little bit more, we've also got our door keypad code, which we've got a five digit number that's going to be from the factory in order to be able to get inside of the vehicle without the fog, or we can set up a unique one for us as well. We can actually set up as many as we'd like to, which is kind of a neat thing, but there always is going to be that five digit factory one that's going to be standard. Moving back, we've got Ford Pass Connect. So the vehicle itself is equipped with an onboard modem and we do have the flexibility of adding it in so we can connect up to 10 devices to the vehicle, which is useful if you've got kids with a number of devices, they can kind of go on the road as we go. Now, one thing to note, you do need to have a, a data only plan through your cell phone provider in order to be able to get that feature though. Moving back, we've got some general settings. So a lot of options there, English, Spanish, French, Celsius, kilometers and liters per hundred, miles per gallon, two different options there. We can toggle that touchscreen beep on or off if we'd like to. And then we can also do a master reset. So if we're selling the vehicle, we can just bring it back to our factory default instead. Moving back, we've got our Wi-Fi and automatic updates, which I make sure recommend make sure that you turn these ones on in conjunction with one another. And the big reason why is because if the vehicle senses an, uh, an update that's available, if you have auto updates turned on and you're connected to Wi-Fi at home, it'll automatically update the vehicle for you. 911 Assist, definitely want to make sure we turn this one on. Mobile apps. So certain apps will work over USB, so we can enable mobile apps, enable them via USB as well. So certain ones, like I said, on the Android side of things specifically, you do have to be physically connected in order for those apps to work. Android Auto, we can remove the phone. When we do, it deletes it. Same thing on Apple CarPlay. We remove the phone and it deletes it. But one of the nice things is that when we go to plug the phone back in, those settings will come back up again. We've got our display. So as nice as this display is, we can lock it out if we want to, so we can turn it off. Or if we want to, we can go to a calming screen instead. Bring that back to life again. Moving back into our settings, we've got the brightness and we can also adjust the mode. So we can switch between a daytime, nighttime mode, etc. Voice control, we've got a, an advanced mode, which means we won't get as many notifications. So if we go to change the, uh, the, the radio station using our voice, 94.9. Okay, it didn't give us any notif notification, but if we jump back to the home screen, it has changed that station out for us. So really, really smart from that perspective. We've got some pretty neat controls there as well. Now we do have a lot of flexibility. So if we look at our voice command list, this is the actual list itself. So what sh whether or not that shows up is gonna be a matter of preference. And then we've got our phone confirmation as well. Valet mode, we do have the option of locking the screen out using a four digit combination. And that's useful if we're valet parking or just for general security as well. And lastly, we've got our navigation settings, which we've already covered off. And that's gonna be the basics of that Sync 3 screen. Now, as we start to move down, so just off to the left side, we've got our engine start stop button. We've got our volume rocker, tuning rocker, change between songs, radio stations. We can pull up our hot button press in order to get to our sound settings. We can change, we can turn that screen off if we want to. So we can go to the calming screen, we can black it out, or we can bring it back to life again. Moving down, four-way blinkers. We've got our basics for our controls there. We've got dual zone climate control inside of the titanium version of the vehicle. So we've got some options there. We've got basics for our climate control. We can turn on our heated seats, heated steering wheel. We can adjust our fan speed. And as we start to move down, because we've got the titanium elite package, we do have a wireless phone charger there as well. It should take a second. And as you can see there, we're charging up. Moving down, we've got a few USB ports as well as a, tra a traditional 12-volt port there as well. 
Moving down a tiny little bit, we've got our park reverse neutral and our drive mode, so a few different options there. So you can see we've also got that ambient lighting, which unfortunately we do not have the option of changing that color out. We've got our low gear. Moving down a bit more, we've got our parking brake. We've also got our auto hold setting. So the auto hold setting is a neat one because with that setting on, if we switch to drive and we take our foot off the brake, it's going to hold us in place. So that's a really, really neat setting. Moving back down, we press the button again. Okay, from there, we've also got a few different drive modes. So moving up, as you can see there, we do have our Eco, Sport, Slippery, Snow Sand, our normal mode again. So a few different options there. We've also got our auto start stop. So that's the one that's potentially going to kill power to the engine. And then we've also got our reverse parking sensor. So we can turn that sensor off if we want to. On top of that, we've got Park Assist. So Park Assist, the vehicle can actually help us out with either parallel parking, perpendicular parking, or parallel park out. So there are a few different options there. Let's actually go through, and we'll go through a quick little test of how the Park Assist system works. All right, so using Park Assist is very straightforward. What we're gonna do is first and foremost, press this little P button along the bottom there. When we do, we're literally just gonna follow directions on the screen. So we've got a few different options. It can help us out with parallel parking, perpendicular parking or we've got a parallel park out so we've got a few different options when it comes down to it so if we look at perpendicular parking to start we're literally just going to follow directions on screen so whether we look at parallel perpendicular it's going to default us to the right side if we press the turn signal and we go to the left side it's going to go to the left instead so we can go left we've got we can go to the right we've got a few different options there and we're literally just going to follow the directions on the screen so we're just going to start driving forward and literally follow directions as we go all right, so it's found a space, so we're just going to stop. Okay, now what it wants us to do is we're going to release the steering wheel and we're going to shift into neutral. So what we're going to do is we're going to shift into neutral, we're going to release the steering wheel, and now what we have to do is we're going to release the brake and we're going to hold the park button. So you're just going to take your foot off the brake there, and we're just going to press and hold that button there, and we're just going to follow the directions on the screen. So as you can see, we've got a little countdown timer going on. It's letting us know what's going on. It's a little bit closer for comfort sometimes, but it's a smart system. It stopped us before a collision there, and we're just following directions on the screen. But look at this. The car is literally doing everything for me. Countdown timer along the very top there, letting us know what's going on. And as it goes, reversing back. Back we go. And look at that. We are now complete. So it really is that simple using the park assist inside of the Escape. So a really, really neat setting there. Now, as we start to move back, as you can see there, we do have a little storage tray, little pen holder along the side and along the top. Click that. And as we start to move up overhead, so a few things to point out there, we do have an auto dimming rear view mirror. We can control what's going on with our cabin lights. And now this specific one, because of the type of vehicle that we're in, we do have the twin panel sunroof. So really, really great look to when it comes down to it. We can figure out what's going on with our shades. We can open or close. We can open or close the window. Uh, I should say the sunroof. And then we also do have our sunglasses holder. We've got our home link, so we can program in a garage door opener if we've got one at home. We've got the business card holder, and we've also got our vanity mirror with lights. We can click this, and we can extend it out if we want to. Click it in order to lock it back into place. All right, folks, now time for the fun part. Going to be taking the Escape out for a test drive and seeing how it handles out on the road. Now, a couple things about this. This is the Titanium Escape, and it's the regular gas engine. So it's got a two liter turbocharged engine in it. Now, one of the nice things is that this one also has the heads up display. So I absolutely love the heads up display inside of the vehicle. It's, it's interesting because it's kind of got this little cutout where it projects what, um, what your current speed is. It's, it's really neat. So it's, it shows you your current speed. It shows you because there's the speed sign recognition, it shows you what the current speed is allowed on the road as well, which is kind of nice. Now, the Escape Titanium does have a few different engine choices that are available. So there is the plug-in hybrid, there's the regular hybrid, then there's this two liter turbocharged engine. So this thing is extremely, extremely peppy. And the reason why it's because it's a two liter turbocharged engine inside of a fairly light vehicle. Now, this is the same two liter turbo that you're gonna find inside of the Edge. It's also inside of the Bronco, the Bronco Sport, I should say, and a number of other Ford vehicles like the Lincoln Corsair and the, even the Lincoln Nautilus. So it's got a two liter turbocharged engine in it. So this thing is used across a ton of different vehicles in the Ford Lincoln lineup. So plenty powerful, 250 horsepower, 280 foot pound of torque, or pound feet of torque, I should say. So tons of power from that perspective. 
Um, this thing is actually fairly comfortable. Now this is the titanium trim level of the vehicle. And in the Escape, we're, we are looking at a, an active X seating material. So leather seats are essentially gone from the Escape lineup. Strictly active X seating material, looks like leather, smells like leather, feels like leather, but it's not leather. So. But compare, yeah, compared to the EcoSport, so the EcoSport up overhead, I had a couple inches. This one, I've got even more. Like I've got about four inches of headspace and same thing. Okay, so this seat is actually down as far as it'll go. So we can still recline it back a little bit. So if you're like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, you'll probably be able to get inside of this thing okay. Anything taller than that, you're definitely looking at another option instead. But this thing, plenty powerful. It feels great. One thing I would love, love to be able to see inside of the Escape lineup would be cooled seats as well. Unfortunately, only available if we look at like the edge and up, but it would be a nice option. Um, I, I'm a huge, huge fan of the adaptive cruise inside of automatic vehicles. So, and the big reason why is because it's a set it and forget it cruise control. And the beautiful part about that is for people that have a tendency to have a teeny little bit of a heavy foot. And the reason why is because what it'll do is, let's say you set it at 100 kilometers an hour on the highway, car in front of you slows down, yours is automatically gonna break. So I, I love it, it's a subconscious play because you think you set it at 120, 130, whatever the case may be, but it's automatically gonna break for you. So subconsciously you're like, okay, well I'm still driving as fast as I can, just, and you just think you're going faster than you actually are. So I love that fact. And just having the vehicle be able to brake for you and all that fun stuff is also a pretty cool feature too. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. I love it. I, I love that we've got that heads up display. It's not standard across the entire titanium trim of the Escape. We do need to have the titanium elite package in order to get that heads up display. But the fact that we've got it, I think is really, really cool. All right, gonna kick back a tiny little bit and this one's got a few more kilometers on it. So I will open it up a teeny little bit. Not too much, but a teeny little bit. Nice and quiet. Now this isn't even the hybrid. Because in the hybrid, like that is a, it's a nice option if you're looking for a good gas saver. Uh, the Escape Hybrid, like it's available in the SE, the SEL, and the Titanium. If you're looking for a video explaining all the different trim levels, check down in the description below. Now that specific video is just in the hybrids. I'm working on another one right now for all of them, but here we go. That is not, not too shabby. Very nice, very nice. Okay, adaptive cruise control, setting that up now as well. Setting it up and I should start braking immediately. Yeah, there we go. Immediately starts braking just because the car in front of me is so close. But I've got it set at 100 and the car is literally doing 88, 87 and it's picking me back up to speed again. Yeah. It's such a useful feature. And like it's so cool because in the heads up display you can see that as well. It's so, so nice. Now it also does have that lane centering system as well. So like my hands are just kind of hovering on the wheel, but it's keeping me in my lane, like fully in my lane. Like I freaking love that feature. And then it does, it reminds you to keep your hands on the wheel as well. And one of the nice things I start to veer over because of that lane keeping system, and it's gonna gently nudge me, pull me right back into my lane. Like that is such a damn cool system. I absolutely love this thing. Okay, I should start braking here as well. Well, the car should start braking, I should say, because I've got the adaptive set up, and it is. And my hands, look at this, I'm off the wheel, and the car is literally steering for me. Now, it's not fully self-driving as of yet, so it, that is coming, uh, but, I mean, at the same time, it is nice to know that we do have that full lane centering system. That is so cool. And where that really comes into play is if you're driving on the highway, or even just driving on the road in general, if you've got that centering system on and you briefly lose the focus on the road. So, you know, you've got an obstacle, a kid screaming in the back, whatever the case may be. If you lose attention for a split second, it's good to know that the car is gonna keep you in your lane. I freaking love that fact. Absolutely love it. I'm easy to please. Like a little, like a little bit. Oh, nice active braking. Oh yeah, nice and responsive, <laughs> that's good.
Nice, comfortable feel, good amount of power as well. So depending on what your budget is, like if you're in the 40s, like high 30s, low 40s, like the Escape Titanium is an excellent option and being able to have that two liter engine is incredible. Now, if some of the extra features like the heads up display, like if the front sensing system, park assist, if those things aren't important, you can look at the SEL trim level of the vehicle instead because you still can get the upgraded two liter turbocharged engine inside of that slightly lower trim level. Pricing wise, they're gonna be fairly close, but not too far off. So nice, so nice. Nice and responsive, it's great. Oh, it's nice. The two liter turbo engine is so, so nice inside of this thing. Going through a little roundabout, just gonna see how responsive it is as we go, oh yeah. <laughs> Not too shabby. Not too shabby. All right. That's nice. So the two, like I said, the two liter turbo engine is really, really peppy inside of the Escape. The one five is good as well, but I find the one five shifting and things like that a little bit off. But inside of the two liter, it is beautiful. Now inside of the hybrid, same idea. It's it's a nice change when it comes down to it. Having that hybrid, so the electric mode with the gas engine, really, really nice option. And here we go. Boom, instead of pressing, flipping it into park, all I gotta do is turn the car off, automatically flips it in park for me. Well, folks, that was a look at the 2021 Ford Escape. What did you think? I love this thing. Spacing wise is nice, good amount of power and a ton of flexibility, all dependent on what price point and features you find important for you. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. Until I see you next time, make sure you stay safe.